So good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. I'm joined by Representative Maloney, uh, Eugene D. Pasquale, Pennsylvania Auditor General. Um, this audit began a little over a year ago, and at the time it really began from a, a letter that was signed by both, um, at the time, leaders uh, Reed and Hanna. Um, but uh, Representative Maloney is here because I want to give him credit as he was really the lead driver of why we are here today, and that was there was a big concern from members of the legislature, and I think Representative Maloney in particular was representing the concern about um, lack of what I think would be appropriately termed um, necessary oversight of the Game Commission, you know, with them asking for um, potential fee increases. They um, both parties in the legislature wanted myself to take a look at this so that we could see what the situation was and what needed to be done moving forward. Um, so today I'm releasing my audit of the Pennsylvania Game Commission, and I do want to begin by, and I know there's going to be some criticism here, but I do want to say that the Game Commission fully cooperated with this audit, and I know that that can sometimes be uncomfortable, but I do want to commend that effort. Um, for more than a century, the Pennsylvania Game Commission has been responsible for managing our state's abundant wildlife resources. The commission does not receive funds through the state's general fund budget. It is mostly funded by hunting license sales, revenues from leasing land for energy production, timber sales, and a federal excise tax on sporting arms and ammunition. My audit report shows that the Game Commission can and must do a better job of managing its finances. In all, my audit contains 11 findings and 43 recommendations. And while I know that this may be a little um, nerdy in the audit world, but this is actually the highest number of recommendations I've had of any single agency. Some of our school district audits and charter school audits actually were higher, but this was the highest of any state agency. And I know that many years from now, that will be certainly be a updated trivial pursuit question. I will start with the game fund. During the audit period, July 2014 to June 2017, the amount of money sitting in the game fund grew by 48% to total over $56.1 million. I checked on the latest figure and was, to be blunt, astounded to learn that as of June 30, 2018, the game fund balance was over $72.8 million, an increase of $16.7 million from when my audit period began. And just to put that number in perspective, that's enough to buy 1,119 hunting cabins in Potter County or 2,091 Ford F-150 pickup trucks, the Super Crew cab model. The Game Commission is sitting on $72.8 million in the Game Fund and says it cannot factor that money into its budget decisions. And as someone who has followed my school district audits know, I do support any government entity, just like any personal um, finances, of having some type of reserve. I do believe, though, that there comes a point where a fund can either be too high unless it is earmarked for specific items. The Game Commission says it owes it, owes it to the nearly 1 million hunters who buy a license each year to ensure that it is considering all available funds when developing its available budget. And again, I understand that, but again, that number I do believe is very high. The Game Commission also must strengthen its overall financial oversight and transparency, particularly when it comes to managing its escrow accounts and tracking lease royalties paid by big gas and oil firms. This is perhaps the most critical piece of our audit. My auditors found that the Commission had seven escrow accounts holding a total of more than $6.5 million. That is in addition to the $72.8 million in the Game Commission Fund. What was even more shocking to me was the amount of money, um, the amount of money is that until my audit, the Commission's Chief Financial Officer didn't even have knowledge of the specific accounts, balances, or purposes of the individual accounts until our audit was taking place and completed. We also found three escrow accounts had commingled funds and another that was dormant and incurring unnecessary fees. The Game Commission is unique in that its escrow accounts are not under the control of the Pennsylvania Treasury. That needs to change and needs to change now. 
My audit also found issues with how the Game Commission verifies or, um, I say, lacks verification of whether big oil and gas companies that lease its land are paying exactly what they owe. Essentially, the Commission is relying on gas and oil companies to say how much they owe without verification on the exact amount. This creates the risk of lost revenue, but the accounting was so poor that we were not even able to determine if the Commission was receiving the money it was due. So basically, the Commission is asking oil and gas companies what they owe, the oil and gas companies send an amount, and then there's no verification to find out if that is, in true, is the true amount. I find the lack of financial con fiscal controls and financial controls to be particularly troubling at a time when oil and gas royalty revenues doubled, rising from $9.3 million in 2015 to $19.2 million in 2017. My team found that the Commission never levied interest penalties or on delinquent payments. It also did not bother to check the royalty payments against the annual production reports the companies submit to the Department of Environmental Protection. So there is plenty of ability out there to make sure or to actually get what the verified amount should be, and the Game Commission never once did it. That simple extra step could have provided an extra layer of accountability for these oil and gas companies. In addition, the Game Commission's failure to log and promptly deposit royalty checks immediately upon receipt created the risk of loss or potential theft of public funds. And I know they do not get general fund money, but in my view, and I think the view of many, all of these fees, whether they be from oil and gas companies or from hunting licenses, are public funds once they are paid. In fact, auditors found instances where checks were deposited several weeks after they were stamped received. In one case, the check wasn't deposited for 63 days. In some cases, the oil and gas companies had to call the Game Commission to request that their check be deposited. Now think about the craziness of that. The oil and gas company is basically making a payment to the Game Commission and the Game Commission was never depositing that money, and the Game Commission themselves had to get a phone call from the oil and gas company to make sure that that check was deposited. Another finding involves the Commission's vehicle fleet, where the agency spends approximately $3 million per year. I'm recommending that they examine the size of their vehicle fleet. I do believe that there are potential savings there, but I also want to point out, and I recognize the Commission, similar to other um, outdoor agencies like Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, Environmental Protection, et cetera, that there are nuances with the Game Commission of why they do need some of these vehicles more so than many state agencies. So I, I want to point out that while we want them to continue to look and monitor for potential savings, I also recognize that there is a unique difference there similar to other outdoor agencies. So I want to make it clear that they should try to do a better job, but this is not an agency where they should be trying to eliminate their fleet because there's public safety involved in just territory where they need to get to that is not like most state agencies. My audit also looked at hunting license sales, which averaged around $35.4 in each of the three years we examined that. That sort of auditor speak when we round it to 35.4. I mean, only state auditors could <laughs> say that that's how we're rounding the number. The number of licenses sold in Pennsylvania and similar states has been trending downward over the long term. Now, when I say similar states, we looked at states across the country. So, for example, Texas has seen an increase, but Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Pennsylvania have been in a similar situation to us, which means we think that there is a demographic challenge of what's happening in, in our Midwestern states. This is an important issue for, obviously, there's an important cultural uh, importance to hunting in Pennsylvania, but obviously there's an economic and financial interest. Look, there are demographic challenges here, and we do know that the Game Commission is trying to pull more younger hunters into, into their fold. I think that that is a good thing. You cannot force people to be hunters, though, but I do want to point out that some of these trends are seen in similar demographic states across the country, and so I want to be fair about that and say I could sit here and bash them for I'm um, seeing the drops, but when you see similar demographic states, that trend is relatively similar. So I want to be fair on that. So, uh, and, and I, I don't personally believe that that is the Game Commission's fault. 
Some of the trend appears to be simple demographics. Baby boomers are beginning to age out of, out of the sport, and a lot of younger people are not coming in just to replace them. And that's not to say there, there's none, but it's not a one-for-one one replacement. Fifty years ago, about 10% of the U.S. adult population hunted. Today, it's about 5%. So obviously, we're a larger country. There's more people, but from a percentage standpoint, it is down significantly. And that is across the country. So it is, it, in my view, it would be unfair to blame the Game Commission for something that's happening clearly as a trend across the country. The commission should continue to explore ways to retain existing hunters and get former hunters back into the field. Hunting is not only a rich tradition in Pennsylvania, but it is a key contributor on the economic points where I said earlier, but particularly in rural Pennsylvania, where a lot of hotels and restaurants rely on these hunters for their livelihood. Now, so that is what we found in our audit. Again, the key stress points for me are the large fund balance, the escrow accounts, not knowing where those where all those accounts were, having the commingled funds is unacceptable, having, and I, I believe, not enough checks and balances on each of those accounts, and um, I do believe that, um, the, the, that this financial monitoring is a critical component that I know the legislature um, and the governor's office are going to want to monitor going forward. Final point before I turn it over to Representative Maloney, and this is not the fault of the Game Commission or uh, the legislature, but I think moving forward, I think many agencies, Game Commission being one of them, need to have more thorough oversight moving forward. Anybody, any human being or group of people that doesn't have independent oversight over a long term can get complacent over their money. I'm not saying that's right. In fact, I would say it's wrong. But I get that that is a reality. So moving forward, that is something that we can't allow to have happen again. And that is the key point to turn it over to Representative Maloney because he was the key driver in getting to this point. And I look forward to working with him and other members of the General Assembly moving forward. Representative? Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Good morning, all. I, just a couple statements with respect to uh, my particular thanks to the Auditor General with respect to, um, just think about this, folks. This is a three-year audit. This isn't 10 years, and this isn't 15. This is why so many of the sportsmen statewide have been concerned for several years as to the direction of wildlife habitat, um, the capacity of wildlife, what has changed, especially in the northern tier of Pennsylvania, with the, with the um, not just the uh, game accessibility, the economic drivers, um, things like this that have been um, very concerning. And I'll remind you of something that I asked two former executive directors of the Game Commission. When you come to us for more money, and the sportsmen often ask us, no matter where we go, where is the money going? You don't really have a good answer. This is one of the reasons why I think this audit was terrific with shining light on a three-year span. And a three-year span that shows a doubling of funds just in a Marcellus money, when the question that I asked the two previous executive directors were, if you didn't have this Marcellus money, what would you be doing? And my answer was always the same. Good question. So to me, shining light on some of these um, escrow accounts, some of the um, uh, practices that have been going on have been um, concerning and necessary. I remind you also of one study done out of Penn State some years back that stated the potential loss of billions of dollars due to contracts that were not bidded out. And so now if we have contracts that were not bidded out and now we have contracts that are in place and you don't even know what that contract reads or how much funds you should be receiving, to me is sort of a double whammy with respect to having the lack of transparency or accountability. So I know there's going to be questions. Um, I know that we do have a new committee in place, an oversight committee that I have already had conversation yesterday and today over the fact that I think moving forward this has opened the door 
for the potential of, well, my good friend standing here used the word possible theft. And so for me, that is very, very concerning as to the sportsman's um, requirement of an agency that's to be serving them. So um, I'm sure you might want to take yep. some questions, and, uh, and I thank you. Oh, thanks, Dave. Uh, mm -hmm. Questions here, Brad. Eugene, does the, is the bottom line here uh, a $73 million surplus? Does that negate or stall, postpone the need for any kind of fee yeah. increase? Um, obviously, that's a decision of the General Assembly. Well, I, you know, I, I would be hard-pressed at this point to support any type of fee increases until I was confident that all of these funds were better managed and that there was a real game plan for that $73 million. After that, if, then it's up to the General Assembly. But at this point, I would not be recommending that. Sir, I noticed uh, several references on your press release here to the economic spinoff from hunting. Did you do any uh, come to any conclusions relative to the current push to try to remove the ban on Sunday hunting and the effects that would have on sales of hunting licenses? We are. Uh, we didn't talk about that specifically in the audit because that's something that we. It's hard to predict something. We we tend to see what's happened and analyze what happened. I am concerned about how that would play economically moving forward. That's just me speaking to you as. As you know, as a Pennsylvanian, I am concerned about that. I think that there should be a lot more discussion and study on that because if the if it is truly a negative ramification economically, it could be devastating the families and the rural northern tier of Pennsylvania's economy. But that was not part of the audit for a very specific reason: is that we didn't have specific data that we could look at and verify. Thank you. You mentioned so the escrow accounts are not in Treasury. Correct, and that's unique. It, yeah. it, can that be addressed through legislative action? Can the Game Commission, can that be done unilaterally? I, how does that work, and how could that change going forward? It, look, it could happen one of two ways. I think the Game Commission could just agree to have that happen, or it could happen legislatively. I think either one of those um, could happen. My biggest priority right now is making sure that each of those accounts have more transparency, that the staff has a better understanding of what their purpose is. And if there are any, any of those accounts aren't necessary anymore, let's get rid of them. Because when you have set those seven accounts and you only have one person responsible for the oversight of them and some of the staff didn't even know that they existed, that to me seems like it's, it's a recipe for disaster. The majority of these. Uh, I want to be fair to them. Uh, certainly, for, as I said before, they were entirely cooperative during the audit. They agreed with practically all the recommendations. Um, but as we've seen before, time will tell. And I do think that this is where the General Assembly comes in because I know that there is, um, let's just say, strong bipartisan um, concern on these findings. We've had dialogue with legislators across the state today. And I do think that there is going to be. Um, a significantly more discussions moving forward. Does the Fish and Boat Commission have escrow accounts, and are they managed by the Pennsylvania Treasury? I don't know, but yeah, look, we can get back to you on that one. If you give us our, your name uh, and information, we will get you that information. That would bear on the uniqueness of yeah. the Game Commission. That, that's certainly a fair question. Um, I don't want to give you an answer that I'm not sure of. So if um, either myself or I got some of my team over there want to give us that information, we'll go digging for that. In regards to providing oversight, can that be done without the threat of the, the funds becoming part of the general fund and no. being taken from sportsmen? There is, uh, uh, we've got to get better in our American political system of walking and chewing gum. And what I mean by that is, it is a fair concern. You know, sort of, we have people that want to dig themselves in and not have discussion. So on this point, for what, I, what I'm getting to on that is, I believe appropriate oversight while not commingling the funds, is critical. I do not believe that this should ever be tied into the general fund. I think when people pay these hunting licenses, they are anticipating that that's for uh, the right and privilege to hunt and to manage the game lands and manage herds and do all of that and not be used for name the pet project in some other part of the state. Having said that, I do also believe that once the, f the fees and fines are paid, they are public funds, which means we as public officials, and I think the public at large in Pennsylvania, 
have the right to expect that they are spent for the purposes that they are designed for. So I think we've got to find that right balance, which it cannot be utilized for any general fund purposes, but also making sure that it is secure in going where it's supposed to go. Yeah, we don't, we don't want another Social Security. Yeah, it, there is no question about that. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, and good uh, I certainly would not ever suggest or um, want that. I think as a sportsman, I think one of the things that's unique about Pennsylvania is that we take tremendous pride in our heritage and tradition. Um, and I believe that what the sportsmen have been responsible for producing should stay with the sportsmen and it should not be in the general fund in any way, shape or form. I will, I will remind you that the difference between game land and state forest land is the fact that that's hunter's land, as I would always call it, um, sportsman's land. And I believe that's, that's the intent. I believe that's what is, how it should stay. I just believe that the oversight and possibly the council or whatever that could be put in place to provide the mission to be always followed. And I think that's, that's the point here. And I know, I know some of the question, I know what your question was earlier, but I will also state something with respect to the sportsman's impact as per one particular day of the week or the weekend or whatever. I just remind you that, and I know you're aware of this, but there was several studies done and surveys done on hunters and sportsmen going afield depending on what holiday and whatnot. And that Saturday opening snafu was an exact example of the disregard for the sportsman. That was probably an 80% no, don't do it, and it was done anyway. So I think it's a good example of why we need to be focused on what is the mission and who are the people that we should be serving. And like I've done since I came here, I've had a piece of legislation to make hunter safety course available statewide so that those kids who would never see that opportunity would say, wow, I didn't know this was here in Pennsylvania. So good question. Of sportsmen and conservationists, um, that would be our biggest concern is that if this oversight would somehow expose those sportsmen's funds, uh, we would not support that. And you would be 100% correct. And I, again, representative will speak from the legislative side, but I would be very vocal as the Auditor General not being okay with that. I appreciate that. Could you give us an idea of the amount of delinquent payments we're talking about and what the potential is in interest payment penalties that could have been yeah. levied on that? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, we, yeah uh, we, I don't feel confident giving the number because the accounting processes were so poor. So I, I think this is where some of my team um, are pulling out their defibrillator, hoping I don't give a number because that number cannot be verified. Um, but let's put it this, we are 100% confident that there were delinquent payments and there was interest that would have been owed and it would, it would have been, it would not have been insignificant. And also the same question on the escrow accounts, any idea of the universe there, how much money are we talking about? Um, we're talking, uh, I want to make sure I understand correctly. Uh, Seven escrow accounts yeah. that, that they didn't even know. The oh yeah. Officer. Some of those were some of those were relatively small dollars. We're talking in the low hundred thousand dollar tens of thousand. Again, I know that's a lot of money, but relatively speaking, it wasn't high. Our biggest concern was that they didn't have the appropriate controls on that money. That there would only be one person in charge of depositing the check or approving a check. That is not in my world, and I don't. I think I speak for most of us. It, you know, even if you're running sort of the lo local Little League, you almost always rely on two checks before something gets purchased. And the idea that you would even have $10,000 vulnerable with only one signature, to me, is unacceptable. And even to that point, several years ago, I, I'm sure some of you remember um, something that I was um, pretty strong, strongly opposed to, and that was the checks that were written out by the former executive director some for $250,000 at a shot. Look, folks, that's the sportsman's money. And how would we really determine who should be writing out those checks? And at that time, those commissioners had to put a halt to it because basically they were complicit to allowing that executive director to write those checks out for a quarter of a million dollars. 
So I think it's a good point. Good question. Were any of the escrow accounts over a million? Oh yes, yes. Um, I believe there was two. I believe there were two of them. Is that correct? We get, we'll get you the exact amount, but there was at least one of them that was, there was at least one of them, but the total was about 6.5 million. So just by, and I know two of them were relatively low. So just by the odds of it, one of them was going to be at at least a million, but I think it was two, but please don't hold me that we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get that information for you. So you, you're suggesting that the treasurer take over oversight of this escrow. What are you suggesting happened with the royalty accounts just that the game commission do a better job requiring. yeah that they should verify how much is owed from the <laughs> DEP. that there is submission to dep that lets you know how much that they have that they that they would owe all you have to do and again i'm making this on some i know it's going to take a little bit of work but just work through the dep data to verify what is actually owed then bill them for that so the the information's already out there it's not up to the game commission to sort of make that up out of thin air Representative Maloney, has the Game Commission formally asked the legislature for any kind of fee increase, or is it just behind the scenes chatter that they may be doing this at some point? Oh, no, they've repeatedly asked for several sessions now for a fee increase. I mean, As a matter of fact, a little bit worse than that is they want to have con complete control over how much that fee is. Well, I guess what I'm asking you, have they recently specified how much that fee should be? Well, there's various different pieces of legislation that have been proposed to different people who, who put that out. But, yeah, they want to be able to just state what they think it should be and, and determine that. Any other questions? Would the uh, Game Commission oversight of these funds and the oil and gas royalties in your estimation from what you've seen require additional employees at the Game Commission? I don't think so. I, I believe that they, look, they may disagree with this, but I believe they have sufficient staff. Again, if I was suggesting that they had to determine the amount of oil and gas pulled from the ground themselves, that's a different issue. But I think, you know, DEP already gets the data from the company. So verifying that, that information, I don't believe that requires any additional staff. And having just one person in charge of approving a check, Find someone who's credible and authentic and trustworthy and make them the second person on the check. Again, I, I've been involved in youth sports from the time. There isn't, a sim, there isn't a single organization that I know of anymore that allows one person to just sign off on money. I'm talking about I coach American Legion baseball. I can't buy baseballs without two people signing off on that. And, again, I'm not complaining about that. That's just because it's not my money. And we were rained out last night for those that might have been no. worried about the opener of the York Adams American Legion Shiloh. Rain in yeah, I know it's, it was shocking that we didn't have the kids out there in the tornado watch last night. I mean, where, where, where is the, uh, the pride anymore? Any other questions? If not, everyone, thank you. Have a great day.